Today we're taking a look at a potential Ron DeSantis versus Joe Biden matchup in 2024 based on current polling. But before we head to the map, let's briefly talk about where DeSantis is at. GOP donors are abandoning him, he's lost favor with Rupert Murdoch, he's not fundraising well, and he's cutting staff. Things don't look good, but despite all this, DeSantis is still second in most GOP primary polls. So let's head to the map and take a look at those current polls. I'll start by giving Ron DeSantis the safe GOP states. They are Idaho, Montana, Utah, Wyoming, both Dakotas, Nebraska minus Congressional District 2, Kansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, South Carolina, and Indiana. The safe Democratic states for Joe Biden are Washington, Oregon, California, Hawaii, Illinois, Maine, except for the 2nd Congressional District, Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, D.C. As you can see, I've been a bit strict on what safe means in this video, but there are several states I can see either party winning by a comfortable margin. Let's start on the GOP side. Alaska is a state that Ron DeSantis should win by double digits. I know we just saw Mary Peltola beat Sarah Palin by 10 points, but I would caution against folks who think this is a sign Alaska will flip in 2024. In the primary, Sarah Palin and Nick Begich combined for 56% of the vote. Peltola is also the only Democrat holding statewide office in Alaska. She's the exception, not the rule. Trump carried Alaska by 10 in 2020. We don't have any polls, but I'm not expecting any surprises. Missouri is another likely Republican state. There aren't any polls between DeSantis and Biden, but Trump has led Biden by double digits in every Missouri poll. An important caveat here is that none of these polls were taken in 2023, but again, I'm not expecting any surprises. However, I was a bit surprised by the current polling in Texas. Three polls have been conducted, and they all show Joe Biden within four points, which puts the state in the lean category. Democrats have continued to gain ground in Texas really since 2018. Trump won Texas by less than 6% in 2020. I'm expecting another single-digit victory for the GOP in Texas in 2024, but look out for 2032, maybe 2036, because Texas is nearly in flip territory. DeSantis should have an easier time holding on to Iowa. We have a poll which shows DeSantis up by 7%, Trump won Iowa in 2016, and 2020 by pretty comfortable margins. I'd also expect DeSantis to win his home state of Florida pretty comfortably. His approval rating in Florida has been dipping a little bit, but he also just won re-election by more than 19% in 2020. The most recent Florida poll has DeSantis leading Biden by 13. I think Florida is really off the board for Democrats if DeSantis is the GOP nominee. Ohio is another state that currently leans towards DeSantis. Ohio has taken a hard right turn in recent election cycles, and DeSantis has led Joe Biden in every poll conducted in the state. However, his lead is a lot smaller than Trump's, which cuts against any electability argument DeSantis' supporters are trying to make. I'm also giving DeSantis the edge in Maine's second congressional district, just based on how well Trump did there in 2016 and 2020. Now let's flip back over to the Democratic side. Colorado has nearly become a safe state for Democrats in recent presidential elections. However, a poll conducted in May by Public Opinion Strategies shows Biden was just a three-point lead over Ron DeSantis. Public Opinion Strategies is a GOP pollster, so Biden's lead is likely larger. I really think Colorado is going to end up being a likely Democratic state. And that same pollster has one result in Minnesota, which showed Biden only leading DeSantis by two points. Clinton carried Minnesota by less than 2% in 2016, while Biden won it by more than 7 in 2020. I suppose a 2% lead isn't that crazy of a result. I still think it's a hard lean for the Democrats. And we have another public opinion strategies poll in Virginia showing Biden tied with DeSantis. I think it's worth mentioning these polls were all released in early May before the big DeSantis collapse. The Democrats should carry Virginia, and I expect future polls to reflect that. But for the purposes of this video, we're calling it a lean Democratic state. In New Mexico, we have a poll from, you guessed it, Public Opinion Strategies. They should really be paying me for how many times I've mentioned them. That poll does show Biden leading DeSantis by 2%. Again, I think this is underestimating Biden's support in the state. I'm also giving Biden Nebraska's second congressional district just based on how well he performed there in 2020. That brings us to 222 for Biden and 219 for DeSantis. If this were a video not based primarily on polls, this is the part where I'd tell you I don't believe DeSantis really has a path to 270, but the polls disagree with me. A recent poll out of Opinion Diagnostics, who aren't rated by 538, showed DeSantis with a 5-point lead in North Carolina. 
that's not a terribly surprising result because it's a state that Trump won twice and it's definitely a state to keep an eye on in 2024. Biden only lost North Carolina by less than 1.5% in 2020, and his campaign is targeting North Carolina as a potential flip in 2024. Things are getting weird in North Carolina, though. I just read a story about a Democrat who ran for a statehouse seat, then immediately changed parties to give the GOP a supermajority. It's crazy. I'll leave a link to that article in the section below the subscribe button. Public opinion strategies also shows DeSantis with a 2% lead in Nevada. Nevada did just elect a Republican governor in 2022, with Adam Laxalt nearly defeating incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto in the Senate race. Nevada was decided by less than 3% in 2016 and 2020. If the GOP finally gets on board with early and absentee voting, I think there's a real chance they can flip the state. It's clear Donald Trump sees the value in banking votes, which is why he's already calling on his opponents to drop out and build a ballot harvesting operation. Keep in mind that Nevada has made it very easy for residents to vote. Candidates who are discouraging them from voting early just simply won't win elections. Now before I head to Arizona, just remember this, this is a 2024 map based on the polls. Please do not shoot me the messenger for reporting poll results. With that out of the way, current polling shows DeSantis with a 9 point lead in Arizona. Is that crazy? I mean after all, Mitt Romney won Arizona by more than 9 points in 2012. But 11 years later, yes, I think it's a bit crazy. Trump won Arizona by 3.5% in 2016. Biden won Arizona by 0.3% in 2020. The demographics of Arizona are shifting. The Latino population is rising. The state is highly urbanized, and Native American populations are coming out strong for Democrats. And all of these things are making it a much more favorable state for Democrats. Working in DeSantis' favor is the fact that he hasn't constantly attacked John McCain over the past several years, so that's a plus against Trump, I suppose. Based on the polls, I'm calling Arizona a lean GOP state in a Biden versus DeSantis matchup, but a nine-point win is very wishful thinking. Let's give Biden a win here. I'm going to make New Hampshire likely Democrat. The most recent poll out of New Hampshire shows him up nine against DeSantis and Trump. This is a state the Democrats have won every year since 2004. I'm not expecting that to change in 2024. Four swing states are left on the map, and DeSantis could win the Electoral College by winning Pennsylvania, and DeSantis' favorite pollster, public opinion strategies, do show him with a three-point lead in the state, which would make it lean towards DeSantis, getting him to 271 electoral votes. A recent Quinnipiac poll, who are more reliable than public opinion strategies, shows Trump leading Biden, so a narrow DeSantis win wouldn't be totally unreasonable. Taking a look at a potential outlier in Biden's favor is a recent poll out of Michigan by Mitchell Research and Communications that shows him with a 13-point lead over Ron DeSantis. Believe it or not, public opinion strategies has Biden down two points in Michigan. Let's average them out. We get a lean or likely Biden victory. And we actually have a poll from a very reliable source in Wisconsin. Marquette found Biden with a two-point lead over Ron DeSantis. That same poll found him with a nine-point lead over Trump. The last state on the map is Georgia, and for the very last time, I can say Public Opinion Strategies has a poll showing Ron DeSantis with a narrow lead. That brings our final electoral vote count to 287 for DeSantis and 251 for Joe Biden. And this is the narrative anti-Trump actors in the GOP are trying to push. They're saying that DeSantis is simply more electable than Trump. That argument had some validity before DeSantis' campaign took a total nosedive. They conducted a bunch of polls, which coincidentally all made DeSantis look like a stronger general election candidate than Trump, then distributed those polls to the press to help get DeSantis some favorable media coverage. I wish I could tell you they were paying me to mention them so much, but they aren't. In fact, this channel isn't monetized at all, but you can show your support by hitting that subscribe button below this video. Then, check out my next video to see why I don't think Biden vs. DeSantis will ever happen because the GOP primary is already over.